It's great to see you all. Hallelujah. As they, as we used to sing, I love this family of God, so closely knitted into one. They've taken me into their hearts, and I'm so glad to be a part of this great family. Your family, remember that, brothers and sisters. Praise God. So we are going to look at something that has been very much on my heart recently. And um, uh, I don't know about you, 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 most of us here have traveled by air. If we can put the PowerPoint on, please, just with the title. Most of you have traveled by air. And there is something we don't like to see on the screen with the red letters say, Final call. <laughs> you know what that means. Uh, we've got translation. You know what that means. We, there, there's time where it says boarding, and you say, "Oh, you know," or go to gate, and then you know we have to go to the gate. And uh, and uh, some of us like to get there one hour before uh, the boarding time, but some of us like to play cool. And uh, we've got uh, what's that? Oh, that's the plane. Of course, yes. <laughs> plane is taking off. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Lord. That was good. <laughs> Duh. All right. So, so yeah, what, you remember what we get? So, so go to gate and wish either shopping, we're having our cup of coffee, we're walking around. Well, we've got plenty of time, plenty of time. And then there are some airlines, have you noticed? It's go to gate, and then all of a sudden it's final call. And you see people running to the gate. And there's something very, very clear, is that when the gate is closed, you don't get on board. Hands up if you've ever missed a flight because the gate was closed. And you can cry, you can plead, you can, you, can, you can do what you want. You can blame somebody. The gate is closed. And I want us to understand that when it comes to the signs of the times and the returning of our Lord Jesus for his people, we are at the final call. This is the final call moment. It's that final call time that we are currently in. It's not just go to gate. It's not just boarding. It's final call. Departure is very near. And I'm going to look at a few things. Jesus reprimanded the religious people of his day that they did not see the signs of the times. They didn't understand. You know, Jesus Christ fulfilled 300 prophecies and they did not see the signs in his life allowing them to believe that he was Messiah and Saviour. And I worry a lot that the universal body of Christ, we are talking about many, many things in our services today, but not the essential thing. And I would say that John the Baptist, when he came to minister, he had one message, be ready, the Saviour's coming. And I really do believe that the, the most important message that the body of Christ has to itself and to the world is Jesus is coming very, very soon. Be ready. Be ready. And what are the signs of the times before the coming of the Son of Man? I remind you that term, Son of Man, does not mean the return of Jesus to rule on earth. The term son of man is when Jesus comes for his people, for those who are ready, those who are at the gate at the final call. 
Jesus told us this, Israel would become a nation again. There would be wars. There have been more wars in the last hundred years than there have in the last four or five hundred years. Earthquakes, you look at the statistics, have increased. Famines, pestilences, well, worldwide pestilence only recently. Uh, signs in the heavens. Uh, interestingly, uh, we are hearing more and more about UFOs, and I believe this is really a sign of the time because there's a very clear connection between the demonic world, the world of spirits, the, the God of the, uh, this, uh, this world, who is the prince of the air, the Bible tells us, he is more and more busy and uh, there are more and more UFO sightings. And I don't know if you've seen recently, the, uh, the US authorities have finally made a statement saying, yes, there are UFOs, but what are they? And the thing is, is this is being coupled with another thing, which is science today knows for a fact that this world did not come together by chance because there's too many proofs to show that there is a design. But they don't want to believe in God. So guess what they're going to believe in? Life in another place in the universe. Aliens that are going to come to earth. It's all being prepared very, very nicely, the signs of the times. And then there's the coming economic and financial order where we see more and more. Uh, I saw Jojo having a 50 euro note uh, behind his phone. Uh, in a few years' times, let me tell you, you'll have no more notes in your pockets. Everything will be electronic. And that will prepare the way where we are told that the last economic system before Jesus arrives is that there's no cash, there's no money. Everybody has to have a sign or a mark to be able to... Look, I don't even need a credit card anymore. I've got everything on my phone. Bam, bam, bam. It's quite dangerous, actually, because you tend to buy more things with it. It's so easy. But anyway... The signs are here, but I'd like us to look at this specific thing that Jesus said, and it was, as it was in the days of Noah. And it's quite incredible because my dear brother Laurent brought out his first uh, video yesterday, and he spoke about the very same thing that God had put on my heart today. I don't believe in consequences. <laughs> Such as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. I'd like us just to read, if you can take your Bibles, whether you've got a, 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 a paper Bible or a phone Bible, let's go to Matthew 24 and verse 33 and just read these two things together. <clears throat> Matthew 24, 33. So likewise you, when you shall all these things, he's talking about what we've just spoken about, know that it is near, even at the door. Final call. Verily I say to you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. But of that day and hour knows no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as in the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and I'll add there, and the door was shut, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall two be in a field, the one shall be taken. Taken where? What, what does that mean? If not to heaven. <laughs> one shall be taken, the other left. Left where? On earth. Two women shall be grinding at the mill, the one shall be taken and the other left. 
Watch therefore, for you know not what the hour your Lord does come. Watch. Do you know why I miss my plane and the final call? Because I wasn't watching the screen. <laughs> I, got, I got distracted. I wasn't looking at the screen as I should. If you look at the screen and you, uh, as soon as you see final call, you go for the gate, you won't miss your flight. But I wasn't watching. I wasn't being attentive. As it was in the days of Noah. How was it in the days of Noah? Genesis 6. Let's go to Genesis 6. These are our two readings. Genesis 6, 1 to 13. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet his day shall be a hundred and twenty years. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men of uh, 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 mighty men which were of old, men of renown. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. These were the days of Noah. Every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Don't you feel that's where our world is going? And it repented the Lord that he had made man on earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and the creeping thing, and the fowls of the air, for it repents me that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord, important. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generation. Well, we'll come to see what that meant. And Noah walked with God, and Noah begat three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. I want to look at a few words and bring definition to then bring you the conclusion to what we're looking at specifically this morning. The sons of God, who are they? In Hebrew, it's Ben Halohelim, and they are angels. There's no doubt about it. These are not the sons of God as there are sons of God today who have received the Lord Jesus. These are angels. As Jude tells us, verse 6, who left their habitation to come upon the earth and to know the daughters of men. Daughters of men is Benoth Adam. It means daughters of Adam. So I know it sounds weird, but the scripture says what it says. Angels left their first estate and they came to the earth. They saw that the women were fair, beautiful, and we're told that they took themselves wives. I don't know that they actually asked, I don't think they got down on a knee and offered a ring. They took them. They took them. I'll have you. I'll have you. These were the days of Noah. Jesus said, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be. Nephilim, we're told, in the uh, called the fallen ones, but the Greek actually means earth-born. So we're told there that as they came into women, there are 
men that were born who were both terrestrial and celestial and became the Nephilim, men of renown. But we're told Noah was a just and perfect. Now that word perfect doesn't mean he had no sin. And it's interesting because that word perfect means tamayim. And it means that in him there was no blemish. He was sound, he was healthy. And there are many scholars that believe that Noah was chosen because he and his family were not tainted at all by what was going on between the sons of God and the women on earth, which was prevalent all over. Very, very important. Thoughts of the heart was only evil continually, as we saw. The earth was corrupt and filled with violence. That word corrupt is shacheth, and it means ruined marred and spoiled. Right. So what do we mean by all these things? What are the takeaway points? We basically see that the flesh of man was corrupted by the sons of God. You see, men were born as hybrids and they were no longer men as created by God. Do you understand? They were no longer men as Adam and Eve were created in the sight of God. Neither were they men uh, that were born after them. As soon as the fallen angels came into the world, they corrupted the seed of men. That was the whole point, and we'll see later. And you see, this term of demigods, gods, dem, this demigod, you, we see in uh, so many different lands, so many different religions, history, we only need to look at Hollywood today, and we see uh, the Marvel, uh, the Greek Titans, uh, who hasn't seen one of the Thor movies, you know? What, what's it all about? It's about men who are gods. And you, you see this, uh, this uh, tradition in history. There was a time on earth where there were demigods. Yes, there were. Uh, but it's not the Greeks that, uh, uh, that invented that. The Bible tells us. <laughs> the Bible tells us way before. So this strategy, why did this happen? Because you see, Satan is, is, is the head of all the fallen angels, of all these sons of God that are being taught about. Why did Satan do this? It's very simple. It comes from Genesis 3 and verse 15. We need to go on to the next slide, please. Thank you. Remember when Adam and Eve fell? Who was deceived? Eve. Adam knew, therefore he was even more guilty. Hmm. That's a point to take away. Anyway, what did, what did our Lord say to Satan? I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. What's that seed? What, what seed? The seed of Satan? Is there such a thing? Well, there has to be, because the scripture can't be broken. And you see, the times of Noah, when the Lord put that gauntlet down before Satan, Satan knew exactly what he meant. He knew that the Lord was going to become man and redeem man from the error and the fault and the sin of Adam and Eve. And so he knew that if he could destroy humanity as created by God, then God couldn't save humanity anymore because humanity was no longer human. And so he tried to corrupt the whole seed of man during Noah's time. And that's why it's so important when we're told that Noah was just and perfect, that perfectedness, speaks about his humanity. He was not tainted. And they went into the ark. Everything else was destroyed so that 
humankind, mankind, could once again populate the earth. And we're told in Jude that this, those sons of God that did those wicked things have been kept in a dark place until the judgment to come. We don't have time to go into that. Okay, so it, as we see, if the seed were corrupted, it could no longer be saved because it would no longer exist as it was created. You see that? And we see that, uh, that final call, there's been a constant war to corrupt or kill Adam's line in the, for the Saviour to come. He tried to do it with Abraham's seed, tried to destroy all the males in Egypt, a fair pharaoh's uh, pursuit as he tried to catch up with them, the way they populated Canaan. Do you remember what God said to Israel? You must slaughter everybody in Canaan. Did, did God do that simply because he didn't like the Canaanites? Because they were corrupted flesh. Flesh can be corrupted by the things that we do. It was against David's line and even when Jesus was born, you will remember, he tried to kill off Jesus and all the children that died as a consequence. So we come, so the goal of Satan is to corrupt all humanity in the great tribulation. As it was in the days of Noah. Is there something going on in our world today that is a precursor and gives us a sign of what Satan might do in the future in the great tribulation? I believe he will, and it will be tied to two things. The mark that people will take, coupled together with the worship of the image of the beast. Now, it's very important because that word mark is not just a pencil. It is a scratch. It's something that's in the skin, in the body. And we see today something called gene therapy. Have you heard about gene therapy? It's a new way that the medical world wants to heal us of all the possible diseases that we might already be born with. And it is a, it's, it's a worthy cause, don't get me wrong. And it has actually worked and it has saved some people's lives. We're at an infancy at the moment now. But there's coming a time, I believe, where science, under the power of Satan, will change our gene pool. Will change who you are. Where we will no longer be humans as God created us. And the worship of the image of the beast will simply be, in my opinion, in the Great Tribulation, where there is a full demonization of each person that does that. And we are actually told in Revelations 14, 10 and 11 that those who receive the mark and worship the image of the beast, there is no hope of salvation for them. As it was in the days of Noah, is there something coming our way where the gene pool of humanity is going to be changed, subtly maybe, little by little maybe, because Satan wants to change who we are. And, um, you know, it's a terrifying thing that the world just got on with things until the door was shut. And that's why I do believe there's not going to be great persecution of Christians before the Lord's to return. I believe we'll have a very, very comfortable, easy life because I believe Satan will catch many more of us out if things are comfy than if there's tribulation and anguish and a fight. And uh, every time the, 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 the body of Christ has been persecuted, it has always grown. It's always gotten stronger. 
And so I do believe that as we come to the final call, there won't be great alarm bells ringing, my brother and sister. Things will just be going their way pleasantly, but we must keep our eyes on the screen. We must keep our eyes on Jesus. We must keep our eyes in the word of God. We must keep our eyes on fellowshipping together. We must be vigilant because the final call is here and the door soon will be shut. Hope that's been interesting to you. God bless you. Let's praise and worship the Lord.